You told me, hey, you got to get in the game. Man. I said, I'm, okay. They said, put me in, coach. I'm in. <laughs> Man, uh, your, your video, right. uh, The Legend Be Mine, is, is pretty amazing. Like, I uh, I just saw it. And, like, I was, like, you're really impressed and stuff. Can you tell me a little bit, like, uh, how long you've been making music? Well, um, it's been – I've been making music throughout school, you know, grad school and all that. I spent, uh, you know, the last – six, seven years practicing law, and uh, a great opportunity came my way to take my my hobby, the thing that I did in the background, and take it to another level. So I, I had to literally decide in 2019 whether I'm going to resign from law practice and join Breakout Music, an upstart label. And I'm like, huh, this doesn't make sense. Okay, sign me up. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, I took the risk. Um, I joined a new upstart label, uh, you know, and... Um, yeah, I've been writing for, I don't know, eight, 10 years before that, seriously, like taking it serious and writing and cataloging and saving it and copywriting stuff. And uh, then this opportunity came to me three years ago to be a part of Breakout Music. And uh, it's, you know, it's all she wrote ever since. Since then, it's just been a wild ride of uh, just producing, making music, writing movies, making movies. And um, it all hit the, its peak. And hopefully not as peak, but it all really started to catch when we got the Netflix deal where our movie written by me and Miriam, the CEO of Breakout Music, uh, was picked up by Netflix. And we got a, a really awesome deal with them. And that movie's on Netflix now with my songs in the movie. So um, it's just been a blessing, man. It's been an unexpected uh, ride and, a, and an amazing blessing. That's amazing. And uh, you were talking about you were actually uh, you went to law school. Where did you go to uh, law school? At? I had a full scholarship to LSU. And uh, you wanted to, like, you know, what made you change your mind about being a lawyer? You know, because, like, that's a lot of people, like, you know, feel that's a lucrative, safe profession. You know, like, they yes, it is. They perceive it as somewhat. But it's the BOM, man. It's the BOM. <laughs> it's breakout music. You know, I was in, I was working on a contract entertainment law case in California, and Miriam saw me there, and we were negotiating and working, and she's like, you know, you're really good. I need a lawyer for my team. Um, would you, you know, or you'd be interested in discussing that? It's like, no, nope. no. Nope. I work in New Orleans, downtown, 22nd floor law firm overlooking the river and all that. And I can see jazz music and smell gumbo in the in the streets. And we have all the festivals. I'm not, I'm not, why would I go really work a real hard job? Like, you know, with the label and all that. They wanted me to do the, come in and do legal work. So I thought about it and we we kept in communication for about a month. And I told them, if you sign me as an artist, then give me the, G, the Jay-Z and Meek Mills deal where I can be an executive on a label, you know, have some, some uh, say so in, you know, how, you know, artists are, are signed and how things are uh, structured in the company, you know, more on the, uh, the, the corporate side and also be an artist and, you know, take the stage like, like Jay-Z, Master P, uh, Meek Mills, all those who run their label, you know, um, then I'd be interested in that. And that was my wildest dream. And they said, yeah, we can make that work. And I was like, say, say that again. <laughs> and so here we are a couple of years later. And uh, um, one of the things that allowed me to get elevated from being an, an administrative executive in a company to a co-CEO is I did the Netflix deal and um, we took the risk in making a movie uh, where we can be a part of the score and be a part of the soundtrack and uh, write some really cool things like you do in music, things that inspire people. We wrote that movie, The App That Stole Christmas. And when it got picked up by Netflix, and their company's like, okay, cool. So, you know, we can, you know, we can, we can do something more with you and to help set the vision of the company. So now it all came, came together and it makes sense. Um, but it was a couple of years of just trying to figure out how I fit into it after leaving a corporate you know, job and in, in law and, you know, something like that. And now I kind of get my feet under me. And so I'm riding horses and having a good time. <laughs> for sure. That's what's uh, happening. Do you feel like, uh, you know, for artists that, you know, it's important for them to have like, you know, uh, some uh, knowledge of the legal like aspects of the business, but do you hear these stories so much about like, you know, artists signing like, you know, horrible contracts, you know, beginning their careers and like, you know, uh, especially like the 360 deals you know, were really prominent and stuff, uh, you know, uh, like in the past, you know? Well, I will say this, and this is a disclaimer. What you hear on this show may not be good for you. Don't go out and try it yourself and hurt yourself because these are actors. <laughs> no, um, I signed a 360 deal. I signed a 10 year deal with Breakout Music, 360, 10 years, because I trust my team. 
I believe in their intentions. I know that they're all about the brand, the label. They're all about me. They're all about Gigi Vega, you know, and they give us their all. And I was comfortable signing a 360 10-year deal with Breakout Music. That's not for everybody, right? So um, as much as your value, I would generally say, I'm not giving legal advice or anything like that, but as much as your value you can retain for yourself in any deal you do, whether it's a broadcast deal, whether it's football, whether whatever, as much of your value or carve outs that you can make that when you're bargaining collectively, um, you, should, you should try to do that. Now, if you're not a person that's into business, you know that you can't find your shoes after coming from the club the next day, you know, you know that you'll buy something at the store and forget to take it out of the car. <laughs> you need to sign a 360 deal to a label <laughs> so that they can handle your business and so that you can level up. And then when you level up, your way out of that is keep it less than seven years, you know, three to five, 360, you'll be all right. So that's the, that's the broad strokes. That's really great. Uh, it sounds though, like particularly in your situation, it's about having like, you know, a team that supports you. Like, you know, that's, that's what right. I hear yourself and everything and like having people around you that are supportive and have your best interests at heart. Uh, do you think that that's why, like, you know, a lot of artists, like, you know, sometimes and stuff, everything, like, you know, they experience hardship with their careers as far as like with the deals that they sign? Because if someone doesn't have like your best interests, you know, in a 360 deal, I can see why that would be detrimental. Yeah. Um, you've got to understand what a corporation is. A corporation is someone that will say, oops, the airbags doesn't work. We didn't know. A corporation is someone that, like Volkswagen, with the problems that they had in Germany, that you know they're cheating the sensors. A corporation wants to make money and win. A corporation's a casino, so you're gonna go in the casino, know that you're in a casino, know that you're gambling, know that you're betting. Only take into the casino what you can risk losing. Only give what you can risk losing. And uh, if it's something that you can't risk, then whatever good deal you think you can get is not worth the risk if you can't lose it. So when you deal with a label, I think that you've got to understand that they're there to make money. And if they're making 10 million to your 1 million, you better hope that 1 million is what you wanted to make and not look at their 10 million and say, hey, why are they making 10 million? And I'm not. Because the corporation is there to make money and they know how to rig the game in order for them to make money. So, um, but you got to understand that your brand, if you brand correctly and you have a team that believes in you, sometimes the faith of the corporation, sometimes the push, the branding, everything that they're giving to elevate you above the fray of the thousands of artists that's out there that's trying to make it. Sometimes that's more valuable than looking at the monies they're making right now, because long term, you can leverage that. They may be able to leverage you for five, 10 years, seven years, three years in a one-off deal or two years, but you own you. And so as long as you own your brand and you have a team that believes in you, I wouldn't watch what the corporation's making. That's, that's my, that's my take on it. Wow. And uh, speaking of your brand, man, I, I love the legend be mine videos, a crispy visual, you know, lots of, like, yeah. you know, uh, can you talk about like, you know, a little bit about the, the creation of that song and then putting out the video. And the, the, the video was not my first choice of how to do it. I wanted to go to Mexico to Rohan Marley's Beach Resort. That's Bob Marley's son. And uh, he's a good personal friend of mine. Shout out to Rohan. Um, and I wanted to shoot there, a beach resort vibe, like a wedding vibe. You know, if I just bring you flowers, baby, will you be mine? That type thing. And Miriam, our co-CEO, who founded the label, um, basically breakout music is a pirate ship with a bunch of pirates trying to make it. <laughs> and she's a leader. And she says, no, let's do something real rugged and sexy. I was like, I could do rugged and sexy. I want you to ride a horse. I said, come again. <laughs> so, you know, I had to get the lessons and the horse is, is powerful, man. A horse is, is a heavy, powerful animal that is very smart and it knows the rider. It can listen to your heartbeat. And so, you know, I had to get lessons and I don't know, in three days I was ready to roll. I, you know, I got lessons on a Friday um, I read up on it a little bit, studied it, learned how to rain, plow rain, or just uh, neck rain, and um, some of the things I needed to learn. And I just, I connected with the animal in a way where I felt comfortable, the animal felt comfortable, and I was off the trot. And so I love that. I love the fact that Lil Nas X did that video with Billy Ray Cyrus, 600 million views on YouTube. A lot of genres came together. That's, be that's before he went full-blown uh, rainbow on everyone. We all didn't know that yet, which is cool, but it only was 
Lil Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus bringing country together with, with uh, you know, pop, hip hop. And so I like the idea of, of coming together. You know, we're in a COVID world where people are fighting on airplanes, where people are, you know, this country started COVID, that one didn't. You know, it's a lot of separation we've been going through. And so the, the idea of doing a video in the West at Apache Junction with an authentic Apache Indian in the movie, women, you know, women who like to party and have a good time and then putting that in the old West and keeping it real, um, that, that really appealed to me as, as something that would be a game changer. And I, I, I appreciate that you, you got it and you see that it's, you know, we're trying to create high art and not just a typical, you know, everyday video. We wanted to give you something that felt like a movie and had some cinema, cin, cinema, cinematography uh, to it that was really uh, endearing. So um, the song came from Joe L. James, who wrote Ella May song, Boot Up, Be Do Be Da Da, Boot Up, She and I co-wrote the song. Um, it was produced by Darius 1500 Boy with 1500 or Nothing, you know, that group that did uh, 24 Carat for Bruno Mars and um, just some amazing song, Ed Sheeran, Jay-Z, uh, Adele. Um, so it came from Grammys. There are multiple, multiple Grammys uh, that, that are shining through this song. That's why the song is big. That's why it has a big, big feel. And that's why we went big with the, the video. And it's about love. And that's what JQ is about. My legacy is spreading, writing, creating, and making love. Yeah, um, country music is uh, one of my favorite genres of music besides hip hop. Really? Yeah, and uh, uh, I, I know cool. like Little Nas X gets a lot of uh, credit because he's one of the most successful, like, you know, to blend hip hop. But other people tried it before, you know, you saw LL Cool J, he, he did a collaboration with a country artist. Yeah. Think, uh, Nelly did it with uh, Tim McGraw. And, um, you know, I just love uh, country music. And, you know, especially like, you know, as far as like the black artists, you know, like who started early on, like Charlie Pride and, you know, uh, people like that. You know, uh, are, are you a fan of country music? In general, I am not into country music, to be honest. Um, I did like... Uh, um, there's a few artists that I do like over the years, but I'm gonna tell you why. I grew up in the Caribbean and my stepfather was a very, very abusive man. And I won't go into all that. You could read some of the uh, articles that's online where I go into it a little bit more. And he listened to country music. So when I hear country music, I'm running to not get my butt kicked because, and I'm talking, I'm talking the elemental stuff. I'm talking George Strait, Conway Twitty. I'm talking uh, Giddy Up Go Daddy and all. I know all those songs. Like, I know 500 country music songs. They're in my head because he played them over and over and over and over. And it's like a weird movie where when I hear country music, I don't associate it with good times. And, you know, a lot of the stuff is, is the old school bluegrass country music. And a lot of this, the country music is about, you know, losing your wife or, you know, you know, having a good time at the shindig and doing whatever. And he, he listened to a lot of that lose, lose your wife sad you know, um, country music. And that's, so, so for me, I wanted to go to music that was more about the struggle, about humanity, about us conquering things. And reggae music was a natural for me because I'm from the Caribbean. And then Afro beat, which is just in our soul, was a natural for me. And to bring that back into an R&B and a hip hop lane, to me, it's just an amazing journey. So I love, and I know country, I love uh, Kenny Rogers, The Gambler. Um, you know, I can quote the stuff. I love Loretta Lynn. You know, I, uh, but I'm a more, you know, if, if there's an artist that I can consume over and over and over in its country, it's going to be the uh, Black Cowboy. It's going to be uh, definitely um, Folsom and things like that for me. And if you know country music, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, I, I, it's in my lexicon. It's in my library and it's been a foundation. I love Dolly Parton, the way she wrote, I will always love you and Whitney turned it into what it is. So I think all genres are connected by the fractions, by the beats, by this, by the tempo, by the sounds. It's all connected and it all can link in in a way together like a soccer or football game or any sport that we all share and love like what nascar is becoming i think it's all just music man what do you think about uh the shape of the music industry now you know uh you, you mentioned kenny rogers for instance I, I did like one of the last interviews with him and one of the things he was saying that he didn't like the uh music industry now because he feels it's too based on singles, it's too based on singles. People don't really focus on creating like whole albums. 
I have never released a whole album. I did an EP for our Christmas movie on Netflix, the app that stole Christmas. And so we have the, the, the EP for that. Um, but I'm not going to create an album until I'm with a partner with a bigger label. And then I can put everything into collections. I like releasing singles because I feel like people jump around uh, in what they listen to. I Right now I'm listening to that new song. I identify this about five six weeks ago on the you can tell my body that song that's just killing everywhere that afrobeat song and now justin timberlake is probably going to be featured on it um just like uh, dj joe bio with joanna last year was big um i like singles because i think singles gives you the opportunity to, to not overcommit in this time you know we, we're a post tinder post um uh you know you know, a, a world of swiping and dating. Uh, we've been disconnected with COVID. I, I like for a person to be able to like one of my songs, jump to another artist. You don't have to buy the whole whole album to consume JQ. Just take the one song you like. And the freedom of doing singles for me is, well, during COVID, I did a song called Amazing Girl. The video is on YouTube. It was, uh, we had to adjust for, for, uh, with not being together. So we hired a, uh, a videographer in Spain and Spain was a little bit more open than the U.S. at the time. So they were going around different parts of Spain shooting with the girls, with the dancers, with whatever, and, and delivering the theme. And we also used people from Puerto Rico. We used people from uh, the U.K., uh, dancers from the Netherlands, dancers from L.A., and we put that all together into one video that is a pro-woman, uh, pro, uh, you know, just girls being awesome, called Amazing Girl, and that's in a dance category, and that video did numbers, too, and the song did numbers, and then I come right back to my core, which is Afrobeat, R&B, Afro, hip-hop, um, so I like singles because it allows me to play a little bit and not overcommit, and I don't have to be, you know, in a straight jacket of trying to go song to song to song. And in time, just like uh, Mark Cuban said, uh, Steve Jobs is of the school that follow your passion. Mark Cuban says, work, 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 work. And then your work is going to become your passion because you're going to get good at it. So the more and more I make music, the more and more I make songs, my collections will become albums and I'll release them as collections, particularly when I'm with a bigger, bigger distributor. But for right now, I just want to put flavor out there that people love and that is fire. And then I want to move on. And that's how I'm rolling. That's nice, man. Uh, what's what's next for you, JQ? Finishing up the new movie. We're in LA finishing up the edit. So we're doing a movie right now called The Drone That Saved Christmas. And we're in post productions. Got some really cool name comedians in there. And uh, even Angela Yee from The Breakfast Club is in it. Um, so finishing up that movie, uh, Miguel Nunez is in it. Uh, you, Joanna Man and uh, Miriam and I would break our music. We wrote that movie. Our, mu our music is in the movie, Gigi Vega our awesome pop artist who's tearing up the charts right now. She's in it. Shout out to Gigi. She's dealing with some tragedy right now. She recently lost a family member, but she'll be back. Um, so our movies is a platform for our music that brought us mainstream. We did 20 million streams thereabouts in, uh, in six weeks in 2020 during COVID. Everybody's inside and they were eating up the movies. So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to releasing The Drone That Saved Christmas in November on a major platform. Uh, and then I looking for, I'm looking forward to when we open back up to be able to go to small and medium cities. I love LA, but you can keep LA. I'll go to San Bernardino or Pomona or Riverside. Um, I love Atlanta, but you can keep Atlanta. I love Atlanta, Atlanta supports us. We shoot our movies, we spend money in Atlanta, we spend money in the economy, but I'm gonna be in Savannah. You know, I'm gonna be in Macon doing shows. I wanna 300 to 500 to 1,000 small venues. I wanna do a lot of that around the US and um, small, medium cities. And I wanna do, you know, tons of shows like that where I can really get intimate with the fans. So that's what's next for JQ. Man, thank you so much, JQ, for uh, coming through last minute. I really appreciate you. Anytime, man. Put me in, coach. <laughs> and thank <laughs> you. Thank you for, uh, for having this amazing show. For sure. You have a great one. All right. Thank you, my brother.